WPGET Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. Hey guys, I just wanted to follow up on a question that I asked yesterday in the Bricks community uh, about how to create these uh, list and grid views using the uh, loop builder. It's not something that currently exists as a feature in Bricks, so it's something you need to create yourself. Um, I wanted to do it simply and I put it out there and got quite a few really, really good um, suggestions on how to do it. Uh, I've ended up doing a kind of a simplified version of it just for this purpose. Um, now, the first one I just want to mention is probably the most comprehensive response was from Maxime here over at uh, Bricks Labs. And his demonstration, which is a full on tutorial, which is uh, typical of their stuff, which is fantastic. Um, is using a CSS grid layout um, which switches between a full width single uh, row list uh, or single column list I should say uh, to a two column list to four column list. Uh, it uses CSS grid so at each of those breakpoints where it does that um, all of the items are the same width. So in this case here if you had a second row there but you only had a total of six items you'd have two on the next row that are the same with that and you'd have some blank space to the right. It's a little different to what I wanted. Um, uh, this is great for many cases, but what I actually wanted was more like this where I'm using the um, uh, CSS uh, uh, flex basis and minimum width so I get a 100% width and it'll scale uh, these uh, tiles on each row to fit what's what is available. So if I look, I've got seven uh, tutorials here, so I can fit four on the top row. I've only got three on the bottom. So if I scale down a little bit, I end up with three on the top, three on the bottom, but it's still 100% of the width. If I scale down again, I've got two at the top, two at the bottom, two there, and then one at the bottom there. So it always fills in the space by just scaling what it can fit on that row. And I'm not gonna go into the CSS for that in this particular tutorial, uh, but it is just what I wanted to for this particular look. Uh, so that doesn't make the other one right or wrong, it's just different, and this is what I actually wanted to achieve. So uh, in the list view, it's 100% regardless of what the width is. All right, so how I've achieved that is I've got a tutorials section uh, which I've given a name uh, which is going to be called tutorial section and I'm going to toggle a class on that based on these uh, buttons here being, or icons I should say, being clicked uh, and that class is going to determine what's displayed in the loop. Alright, so Uh, down uh, here, what do we got? Heading block, uh, list type switcher is just a just a standard block. It's just to contain these two icons and align them to the right. Uh, the icons themselves, uh, I've given a ID. I'll just zoom right in on this. So I've given the first one an ID of switch list view and given it a class of list switch, which I'll talk about shortly. The second one, I've given the ID of switch grid view, but it's still got the list switch. The list switch is used by JavaScript to find these uh, and uh, listen to the events on them. Uh, and that's all that we need for these switches. Okay. Uh, then I've got my loop, uh, which for some reason got switched off. What happened there? There we go. I must have been playing with that. All right, so we've got a, a loop item. So this is just a div that I've called a loop item. And under that, we've got our grid block and our list block. So the list block contains a basic text and a button. So that's what we're seeing on the screen at the moment. With the grid block, I'm just going to go back to my tutorial section. I'm going to change the class on that. So I'll zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to change my class on that to a grid view. Uh, and now you can see we've got our grid. So I'm seeing this grid block. So just to show that again, so grid block here is my 
uh, overlay, which has a uh, dark color and a rich text, which is a description. I've got my ribbon, which is these advanced beginner, etc. And then I've got a background image. Uh, that's pretty much my uh, grid block. And then my list block down here is just basic text and a button. Right, so uh, if I go back to my tutorial section and I take my switch grid view off and I put my switch list view on, now I can see this block here rendering uh, instead of that block there. Uh, so they both render. And this just displays uh, on the DOM that just hides the grid when we're in list view or it hides the list when we're in grid view. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so heading over to the code, uh, let's look at the CSS first. So the CSS is when I have a element with switch grid view, um, take the tutorial list item in a block and hide it. Now that is the name I've given on uh, this here, so the list block. Uh, I've called that tutorial list item in a block. So I was just giving it a class of that. I could have given that an ID actually. Um, actually, no, I couldn't because uh, no, I couldn't because that's actually a loop item. So, um, so yeah, so so basically, given it the class tutorial list item in a block, and in my CSS, if I'm in grid view, hide that. Okay, we also want to change the color of this uh, icon up here. So all I'm doing is that when we're in the grid view set the switch grid view um, element to the color primary. So this is the switch grid view icon. So you can see up here, my ID is switch grid view. So if my tutorial section has switch grid view on it, then set the color of that icon to primary. And then just the opposite here for the list view. Uh, and now in the list view, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, the tutorial item, which is the uh, this list item here, and by default, what I'm doing with that is I've got it set to a row, and I've got the flex basis on that set to 20%, and I've got the uh, minimum width set to 260 pixels, and that's what gives me this layout that I want. So it's going to fit four on this column, I'm um, oh, sorry, four on that row. Uh, and whatever it can fit on the next row. Uh, and it just works well for me at those different breakpoints to do exactly what I want to do. Uh, so that's what does that. But what I need to do is that when I'm in the list view, I need to override this. Um, so in the uh, CSS, when we're in list view, just override that minimum width. Uh, I had to put the important keyword on here because what it was doing is in the editor, uh, it wasn't applying, but in the front end it was. Uh, and just being lazy, can't uh, be bothered figuring out what's getting in the way. Um, I thought I'd just uh, uh, do that as, a, as an important uh, to override it. So I've got a feeling that what's happening is that in the editor, uh, this is um, taking precedence. Maybe it's the order that it's um, uh, loading it in. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the rest of this stuff here is just styling of the actual grid or um, list. All right, so that's pretty much the CSS. So uh, the JavaScript, very, very simple. Again, this is a single use case for this tutorial list uh, grid. So it is not made to be universally reusable. It's really just for this purpose here. So if I can make it very simple. Um, so all I'm doing is getting a, all of my switches by looking for everything that's got the class of a list switch. So all of these, so these two buttons here or icons here have got the list switch. Um, so I'm grabbing a uh, DOM uh, reference to, uh, what do they call them, a DOM list reference to those. Um, and um, uh, it's just storing that on the view switches. Uh, I'm getting a reference, DOM reference to my tutorial section. So that is uh, this section up here. Um, I'm then setting a storage name. So this is for my local storage to maintain state between page loads, sessions, etc. Um, and that's the name of the variable I'm going to call it. Uh, and then I've got a states array, which is the possible states that we'll have. So we've got the switch list view and switch grid view. 
and what is my default state that I want, which is the uh, list view. An ES6 function here, which takes in the state, which is actually a string, one of these, um, goes, gets the tutorial section reference, and removes all of these states from the class list. Uh, it then adds the state that's passed in to the class list, so that's the toggling. Then we're going to set that in the local storage for our variable name to whatever that state is. Uh, pretty simple. Now, all we have to do now is get the stored state from local storage using the same variable name. If it exists, then set our state to uh, whatever that was stored in the last um, session or page load. So this is just on the first page load here. Uh, if it doesn't exist, then we want to set the state to whatever we told it's going to be the default up here. Straightforward. Uh, then we look, we're going to iterate through each of the view switches, so the list and the grid, uh, and we're going to add a click event listener and get the current target, and we're going to set our state with whatever the ID of that uh, item is. So what we have to do is on each of these, we set the ID to the class name we want added to the tutorial section when it's clicked. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's all of the CSS and JavaScript that I've used. Again, uh, if I was going to make this more globally useful, uh, I would probably revisit this and, uh, and uh, uh, make it more dynamic. Uh, but in this case, uh, it works for me and uh, that's all I need. So hopefully that's a good insight into a way of doing this. Uh, and uh, if you enjoy it, please subscribe, please like, and uh, let me know what you think.